Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, today we will continue our discussion of finite state Markov chains uh, by talking about the classification of states. I already mentioned to you a few uh, words here and there about absorbing states, transient states, etc. Now we will formally discuss these things. First, um, I will make uh, a definition. Um, in a Markov chain, a state I is said to be accessible, accessible from another state uh, J in the state space if there is a, a number of transitions N such that it is possible to go from J to I in N steps with positive probability uh, such that P J I N is bigger than zero. Okay. So let's uh, think about our uh, examples from previous lectures. For example, we had a two umbrella problem. How many states did we have uh, in that problem? Three. Three. So state zero, two, one, and when I draw them in this order, uh, the, the Markov chain kind of looks uh, linear. Why? What kind of transitions did we have from zero? I go to 2 with probability 1. I'm not going to write the probabilities on, on them at the moment because all we need are transitions with non-zero probability. So from 0 I go to 2. From 2 I can go to 1 or I can go to 0. From 1 I can stay at 1 or I can uh, take my umbrella and go in which case the next state is 2. Okay, so these are the um, transitions with non-zero probability. So in this case, <clears throat> um, which state is accessible from which state? All of them are access accessible from each other, right? Uh, for example, 1 is directly accessible from 2, but 1 is also accessible from zero in two steps. Awesome. Okay, so there is nothing, no state here that is not accessible uh, from any other state. Okay, so uh, note that you can prove the, pro the following. Uh, if J is not accessible from I, uh, when the process starts in I, uh, the probability that it will ever enter J is zero. Uh, this is quite straightforward given the definition of accessible, but if you want you can prove it mathematically and there is a there is a short argument in the lecture notes now here is the important definition coming up we say i is recurrent recurrent okay if for every j accessible from I, I is accessible from J. This means wherever I may go, starting from this state I, there is a positive probability of coming back in a certain number of steps. In other words, uh, starting from I, I will come back to I with probability 1, eventually. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this state. What can you say about this, uh, the states in this Markov chain in terms of being recurrent? 
from zero, wherever I go, I will come back because every state accessible from zero, uh, and zero is accessible from every state that is accessible from zero. And this is the, the same is true for every state. So in this case, all the states are recurrent. Now, um, uh, okay. Um, so, now let's uh, give you another definition. And later I will give you a more formal definition of uh, recurrent. Now, um, if I uh, is accessible from J and J is accessible from I, we say um, I and J communicate and we denote it as I double-headed arrow J. I and J communicate. Okay. Now, uh, as a uh, consequence of this definition, if I communicate with uh, J and, and uh, J communicates with K, then um, I communicate with K. How can you prove this? If I communicate with J, then from taking, uh, you know, starting from I, we can take, for example, and steps to go to J. There is an and such that in and steps we can go to J. Right? And uh, if J communicates with K, then from J we can take M steps to go to K. Right? This means that K is accessible from I. By reversing the argument from K, since K communicates with J, there is some uh, L steps for, to go from K to J, and then there's from J to I, there are some uh, T steps to go from J to I, so there is a uh, prob positive probability of going from K to I in uh, L plus T steps. Okay, so that's quite easy. Now, uh, if in a Markov chain, if all states communicate with each other, if every state communicates with every other state, uh, the Markov chain is called uh, irreducible. Now let us look at our Markov chains here. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the EE202 problem. How many states did we have? One, two, and three. Um, from one, I can stay in one, uh, go to two, oh, sorry, go to two, or go to three. If I'm in two, I stay in two. Remember, this was the uh, state of having passed uh, EE202. This is the state of having quit. Uh, so if I am in, in three, I will stay in three. Now, uh, let's uh, see, um, uh, let's see uh, these two chains in terms of these definitions. <clears throat> so in this case, what do you say uh, about uh, whether or not this Markov chain is irreducible. So it is, or is it not? Who says it is? Semano and many people. <laughs> okay, why? Because they all communicate. Right, so they all communicate. So this Markov chain is irreducible. How about this one? Is anything different here? What is? Suleiman, right? 
So, I'm sorry, Suleiman. Uh, sorry, because of the masks, I got confused. What's your name again? Emin. Emin. Who? What doesn't communicate with what? Right, so two, so two is accessible from one. We can denote it like this. Two is accessible from one. Three is accessible from one. But then uh, the other way is not true. One is not accessible from each of the other states. So one doesn't communicate with two. One doesn't communicate with three. Does two communicate with three? No, not at all. Uh, okay, so in this case, the Markov chain is not irreducible. Okay, so this piece, two, does not communicate with the other rest. Three does not communicate with the rest. Later on today, we will see the implications of this. Let's uh, move on to the spider and the insect problem. Remember, uh, I had these four positions, one, two, three, four. Uh, on the windowsill, uh, one contained, uh, one was the position with the uh, spider web. And um, if the insect is in three or four, it kind of stays in three and four. If it's in two, it either goes to three or goes to one. If it is one, it is captured. This is the Markov chain. So what do we say here about uh, the different um, uh, cases, the, uh, the, whether uh, this state, this chain is irreducible or not? It's not irreducible. Uh -huh. Again, it's not irreducible. Why not? Exactly. One does not communicate uh, with two either, or three or four. Uh, two does not communicate with anything else. How about three and four? Exactly. Three and four communicate with each other. This is interesting. So let's keep this in mind. Three and four communicate with each other, but they don't communicate with the rest. Okay, let's look at the random walk uh, on the set of integers. Zero, negative one, one. Oops. Negative two, two, and so on. And suppose we have self transitions at each state. And we have transitions to one state up and one state down, to the right or to the left. How about this case? Suppose all the probabilities are positive. <clears throat> they all communicate, yeah. Uh, all states communicate. So, uh, basically irreducible. All right, so let's now see some more definitions. Uh, now, uh, I talked about the word, I mentioned the word, a word of recurrent, but now we'll do a more uh, proper definition of it. Um, so, um, a state I is recurrent, recurrent, um, if a state I is recurrent, if starting in I, the probability of returning to I at some time in the future is 1. Okay? Starting in I, the probability of ever returning to I is 1. Otherwise, it is transient. Now let's take a look at our 
Markov chains in terms of uh, recurrent and transient. Here, starting in 2, am I uh, guaranteed to return to 2 again in the future with probability 1? Yes. How do I even prove something like this? <clears throat> now, uh, starting in 2, uh, there is a positive... Uh, uh, so there, there, is, uh, there are paths coming back to 2 with positive probability. Um, and the probability of going somewhere that I will be, be lost forever is 0. So eventually, after enough time, I will come back to 2 with probability 1. Of course, you can formally prove this using something called the borel cantel dilemmas. Uh, and you can read about this, but b uh, it, 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 within the scope of our course uh, at the undergraduate level, we don't want to emphasize those details. Um, basically, given that there's a way to come back to two, given enough time, uh, this will happen. Uh, and by repeating this argument, if a recurrent state is visited once, it is certain to be revisited an infinite number of times. So a recurrent state, a recurrent state, state will be revisited infinitely often. Because once it is revisited, the situation is completely renewed. Right? It will be uh, getting revisited again. Okay, so it will be revisited infinitely often. Now, uh, so basically, what can you say about the states in our examples? In the two umbrella problem, Are states recurrent or transient, or some of them recurrent, some of them transient? What do you think? All of them recurrent. All of them. Who said that? What's your name, please? Atakan. Atakan. Why? Because all of them are uh, accessible from each other, so they will, uh, it will come back to them uh, infinitely many times. Right. Right. So, um, so in this case, all states are recurrent. How about this case? Yes? Two and three are recurrent. Uh-huh. Right. Two, three are recurrent. And one is transient. Any, does anybody have a question about that? Yes, please, Why? Ataka. How can we say, like, uh, after one, if we go to two, we're not going to go to three, so how can we call it recurrent? Okay, look at the definition. Starting in I, the probability of returning is one. So, right, if we start in three, we will definitely return. Okay, uh, how about this problem? Very nice. Uh, here, 2 is transient. One, Atakan, clearly, right? Uh, one is recurrent. How about three and four? Three and four are also recurrent. Now, this is an interesting case, because this is different. All of these Markov chains have a finite number of step, uh, states. In this course, actually, we focus on the finite state Markov chain case. Let me write it down, finite state Markov chain. All 
three examples are finite state Markov chain. This Markov chain, though, is different, has an infinite number of states. So things are a little different here. We cannot really say uh, that just because it is irreducible and all states uh, communicate with each other, that they're all recurrent, because it will depend on this probability. Suppose the probability, I'm sorry, pro probability of going to the uh, right is P. Uh, um, suppose, you know, uh, going to the right is P, uh, and uh, this is Epsilon, this is 1 minus P minus Epsilon. Okay. If P is greater than a half, this chain will be transient. In fact, uh, the only case where uh, this, the states here are recurrent is the case when the probability of going to the right is equal to the probability of going to the left. So in fact, when I said this definition, we, I mean, I loosely said that a state is recurrent if for every i it is, uh, it is accessible from, it is, uh, it, for every j accessible from i, i is accessible from j. This was for finite state Markov chains. The more proper definition is here, is this one. A state i is recurrent if starting in i, the probability of returning to i is 1. Now, in this case, uh, either all states are recurrent or all states are transient. We won't go too much into the uh, infinite state uh, case in this course uh, because this is an undergraduate course and uh, Markov chains is only a portion of uh, um, what is covered in this course. But uh, those of you who are interested in um, these topics, exploring these topics further, could definitely read in the te textbook or uh, in the, there are uh, various uh, no, very nice discussions of uh, problems like this in other textbooks as well and you can talk to me um, and I could give you sources uh, if you if you remember uh, we talked about the cliffhanger problem what is the probability of ever crossing a positive threshold and that problem is quite interesting uh, and it is related with the proof of all states being recurrent, uh, when are they recurrent, etc. Of course, in-depth discussion of infinite state Markov chains is covered in another different course in our department. It is EE 531, first year graduate course on stochastic processes, and we already have open courseware uh, content uh, for that course. All right. So, uh, let's continue uh, by making another observation about the transient case. I claim that if a state is transient, then the total uh, number of transitions that I make until I leave that state forever is finite with probability 1. And specifically, the total number of transitions until leaving that state is geometrically distributed. So let me write that down. If i is transient, the total number of uh, times that i is visited uh, visited until it is left for good is a blah blah uh, blank type of random variable. Okay. 
what kind of random variable do you think this is? So if I'm in I, every time I make a transition, there is a probability that I will go to a state from which I will not come back by definition of being transient. So what is the distribution of the total number of visits to I before I leave for good? You, you know this, this, it's the discrete random variable. Geometric. geometric, right. So it's a geometric random variable. Uh, because, so every time we are in I, there is a probability, let's say, AI of leaving for one or somewhere else, one of the recurrent classes. I'll define what that is. And never come back. So the probability of making K visits to I before leaving is given by uh, 1 minus AI to the k minus 1 times ai, k greater or equal to 1. And that's a geometric distribution. All right. Now, let's turn back uh, to the recurrent case. Um, let a of i be the set of states accessible from I. Let A of I be the set of states accessible from I. Um, all right, so here is a, a result that I uh, want to show. And this is quite important. It's going to shed light on our further characterization of these states. Uh, if I is recurrent, if I is recurrent, then all J in the set A of I are recurrent. If I is recurrent, everything, every other state I may reach from I should also be recurrent. This is interesting because I didn't say communicate. I said reach. Why is this true? You said the probability of starting from I and returning that point is one probability. Mm -hmm. If we end up with, uh, if we eventually end up with that point, we need to visit another recurrent state. Come. And if we go from I to a transient state, mm -hmm. it, uh, the probability we end up with the starting point is not one. Why not? It's not one. But, um, I mean, uh, hmm. If you feel that. Mm -hmm. Eran, do you have a thought on this? Uh, that's a nice um, start, Suleiman, but maybe we need to elaborate a little bit on this. So uh, let me erase this part. <clears throat> Any other ideas? So, yes, Atakan. But there may be other uh, things like, for example, 3 is recurrent, 2 is also recurrent, right? But they don't communicate. But only 
only with themselves. That's it. Uh -huh. So there is no break in the Markov chain with themselves. I see. I see. So I, I understand what you're trying to say. So let's uh, start by saying let x0 be uh, i. Okay, so we start in state i. And let xn be j for some other time n. So we start in i, we go to some j after n steps. And j is, of course, among the uh, states that uh, are accessible from i. OK. Um, now, there, I, I claim that there must be some value of m, OK, bigger than n, of course, such that mm, xm is i, because otherwise, because otherwise, uh, i would not be recurrent. <laughs> Very simple, really. I mean, it would contradict with i being recurrent, right? Starting in i. At some point n, I end up in j. But then uh, there must be some other time in the future that I'm back in i, because if not, then i would not be recurrent. OK. But then, but then, OK, but then, is as i communicates with, I mean, I, uh, j is accessible from i. Uh, there will be some k, right, in the future, bigger than m, such that um, xk is equal to j again. Because if I can go from i to j once, I can do that again, right? So very simple argument when you think about it, uh, but um, it proves the statement. So from a recurrent state, I can only go to other, uh, other recurrent states. From a recurrent state, I cannot go to a transient state. If I could go, that state would not have been transient. All right. So basically, if state i is recurrent, um, every state that communicate with i are also recurrent, what we say is they form a recurrent class together. So i and so basically if i is recurrent i union uh, a of i is called a is a recurrent class or simply a class. They form a class together. So here, let's look at the recurrent. Let's find the recurrent classes. Two umbrella problem. Do you see a recurrent class? Yes. They all form a recurrent class. So one recurrent class. And that is the class 0, 1, 2. How about this case? Two different recurrent classes. So uh, recurrent classes are uh, two by itself, three by itself. How about this one? Right. So the recurrent classes are one by itself and three and four together. Here, we don't know. If the random walk is recurrent, then everything is one recurrent class. OK. So now, clearly, you will see that um, 
the set of states in a finite state Markov chain okay, can be partitioned into transient states and a number of recurrent classes. Tran recurrent class 1, recurrent class 2, and so on. So, uh, can all states be transient in a finite state Markov chain? Why not? What's your name, please? Tuba. Tuba, why not? Right. As, 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 when it leaves, it has to go somewhere, right? It has to eventually end up somewhere. So they cannot all be transient. And we can use this result. We can use this result. If a state is transient, after a while, we will leave this state and not come back. So suppose that is time um, t1. But for every state, there is some time ti that we will leave and not come back after that time. Take the maximum of those times, then we have left all the states. Uh, where are we gone? <laughs> right? So basically, there has to be at least one state that is recurrent in a finite state Markov chain. Okay? In the infinite state case, that, that's another question. So now let's write the transient states. For these, uh, for these examples, what is transient here? Nothing is transient. What is transient here? One is transient. What is transient here? Two is only, the two is transient. This, again, we don't know. So, uh, so let's see. Um, all right. I think the only classification that remains um, is the notion of periodicity. We can uh, define that. Um, but how about we postpone it to the beginning of the next lecture? So the next thing we will talk about is periodicity. <laughs>